With Halloween right around the corner, even though I'm in Australia and we don't even celebrate, majority of my viewers are American. So hopefully a lot of my viewers are getting into the Halloween mood. And I've watched a lot of horror because it's my favorite genre and I'm here to give you the best of the best. So let's start from number 20 though. So number 20 is It Follows. This is directed by David Robert Mitchell and it came out in 2014. The soundtrack's really cool. It's just full of like crazy synths all over the place. And it's very nostalgic of earlier horror with the soundtrack and the Vibe and the American suburban setting with like no parents around and it's just teenagers the whole time. The concept of this movie is really simple but really effective and that is that there's this monster that follows people around and it walks, it never runs, but it just is always following you, it never sleeps. So you have to like constantly be on the move or it's gonna get you. It's really fun, it's a really good movie and I love watching this movie with other people. It's one of those movies, it's, it's like a really fun group watch. Number 19 is As Above So Below came out in 2014 and was directed by John Eric Dowdall. This movie's not as well rated but I enjoyed it. I think that I specifically enjoyed this movie because it's one of those horror movies that's like a claustrophobic sort of feel. It's all set in the same place. This movie specifically is set in the catacombs in Paris, like the tunnels underneath the city of Paris. This group of like investigative reporters or journalists, they go under and see these catacombs to discover what's there and they definitely discover more than they bargain for. I just love movies that are set in a specific spot and they never leave that spot. I feel like it's really separate from like your real life. You get really immersed and sucked into that specific world. So for this movie, you get really sucked into these tunnels just like the characters do. So you really feel like you're there with the characters. Number 18 is Us. This movie came out in 2019 and is obviously directed by Jordan Peele, one of the most famous and it directors of horror at the moment. I find his stories that he decides to tell in horror, it obviously has those horror elements that you're used to but at the same time it is a little different and something I haven't seen before. It might be the mix of currency that it sort of has, like it feels like it's very current and like set in our time and it also like has a lot of humour mixed in with it. Jordan Peele comes from a comedic background so you definitely get that in his movies. The comedy mixed with the horror elements is like a really interesting way to do it because you don't see much comedy in horror, like at all usually. And Lupita, she's so good. She's like, it's so good. I ha Oh my god, she's so creepy man. Number 17 on this list is Troll Hunter. This came out in 2010 and was directed by Andre Ovridai. So this is another subgenre of horror that I love and it's found footage. A lot of people don't like found footage and you'll definitely see better found footage higher up on this list. But the thing is I've pretty much seen nearly every single found footage film there is <laughs> and I just like this one a lot. Like I'm not exactly sure why but I feel like if you want to watch a found footage film, this would be on my list of ones to get to. Number 16 is Paranormal Activity number three. Came out in 2011 and is directed by Henry Joost and Ariel Shulman. The Paranormal Activity series, you might not like it yourself. I find it to be very groundbreaking and as a found footage horror fan myself, you can't not give credit to the Paranormal Activity franchise and what it did for the found footage horror subgenre and how it propelled it and how so many more films came out afterwards and were made because of the success that the Paranormal Activity franchise found. Number three, I personally find to be the scariest of all of them, especially when it comes to jump scares and things like that. If you don't want jump scares, then this is not the movie for you. But if you really want something that's like super jump scary and really has like a huge punch at the end of the movie and has quite a slow build up and then really goes at it at the end then this movie could be really fun I think for a group watch. Number 15 is a classic. It's Alien from 1979 by Ridley Scott. I grew up on the Alien movies. They were nearly the only movies I actually watched that were in the horror genre when I was little because my dad loves the Alien franchise and literally like the best sci-fi horror in my opinion that you'll come across. There's just so many iconic moments from these movies and the fact that it came out in 1979 is just mind-blowing as well. Number 14 is Paranormal Activity from 2007. This was directed by Oren Pelly. More Paranormal Activity, what do you expect? I love the Paranormal Activity movies. I'll be that person on YouTube, I don't care. This movie is crazy. The budget that it originally had and then the amount of money it was able to create is literally insane. And while the other Paranormal Activity movies maybe showed a bit more, if that makes sense, like they showed a bit more of the ghosts, a bit more of the gore and stuff like that, and a bit more of the jump 
jump scares. The cool thing about Power Activity number one is that it doesn't actually show very much. They leave a lot of it up to the imagination, which is really cool to see in this film. It's very simple, very simple concept. A haunted house essentially. While some of the other films it's like you have to be in like the catacombs of Paris or you have to be on a spaceship. The cool thing about Power Activity is that it could happen in any household. Like what happens in these movies. Super cool. Number 13 is The Babadook that came out in 2014 and it's by Jennifer Kent. This is an Australian film. It is horror but it's also a drama. It's essentially a film about grief, broken families, but then also has this horror element into it. So I really like films that do that, that they take a really simple character driven concept and then they also apply an element of horror to it to enhance the drama. So if you want a film that is a very serious horror then I would definitely pick this one. Number 12 is Perfect Blue. It came out in 1997 is by Satoshi Kon. I know this isn't like a proper horror but it is the most disturbing and gruesome weird anime that I've ever seen and I'm a huge anime fan so I wanted to include an anime in here so if you're feeling like watching an anime that has like horror elements and is gonna like creep you out a lot I would recommend Perfect Blue. It's like super messed up and weird like you're not really meant to understand what's going on in this film a lot but that's the whole point so if you want a film where you don't really understand what's going on but it's really gonna make you think you're gonna have to like analyze it after you watch it. This is definitely one of those films you should go watch for sure. It's one of the best confusing and mind-bending animes I've ever seen in my life. And then number 11 is another like not an actual film but I really wanted to include it. I'm just putting these all before the top 10 so my top 10's pure and clean and that is The Haunting of Hill House that came out in 2018 slash The Haunting of Blind Manor that came out in 2020 by Mike Flanagan. I can't get enough of these. If you want a really cool series to watch I recommend these two TV shows both created by the same guy have very similar elements but they are different storylines like different plots all together they also feature some of the same actors and actresses but also do a bit of something different in each one and the stories are not really connected to each other if that makes sense but you sort of feel like you're watching the same show because it has the same sort of vibe both of them are driven a lot by family and the ideas of family love and connection to others but then they also once again have those horror elements included the first season haunting of hill house it really plays in that idea of like trauma when you're a kid or trauma when you're little and then how that plays out in the later years of your life as an adult and how things from your childhood can still haunt you and how a family dynamic is impacted by that and then the second one Bly Manor that which just came out recently is also really good I don't want to spoil it too much but I would say that the overall vibe of this is it includes a lot of themes about love and grief and loss and also family but in a different type of way it's a different spin on the idea of family in this one they're both very scary very cool set in these huge mansions there's also some really good cinematography and story writing in these tv shows i'd really recommend it but now let's get into my top 10 horror films of all time like let's do it so number 10 is saw number two which came out in 2005 is directed by darren lynn bozeman i'm a huge saw fan and here's the thing about saw is everybody they toss saw to the side like it's just a gore franchise it's all about them cutting off their limbs but it's really not the saw franchise later definitely can be like that but the early saw films are so good i can't even express it to you so number two i really like because it has a lot of mind games it's very thriller actually more than horror in my opinion there's definitely a bit more horror in number two than there is in number one but number two still has a lot of cool psychological thriller elements to it and my second favorite genre is psychological thriller so i love saw 2 because it has that mix of horror and psychological thriller so if you're looking for something that's going to like play mind games on you and there's a lot of twists and turns it's hard to figure out what's happening saw 2 is a really good movie check it out number nine is grave encounters came out in 2011 and was directed by colin minahan stuart ortiz and the vicious brothers this film is a gem this is an underrated gem this film so this film also has elements of humor in it which you wouldn't expect I didn't expect any humor going into this but it actually is sort of funny at points but not in a way that it ruins the movie so it's got that humor I love it this movie once again is fun to watch in a group it's fan footage but good fan footage in my opinion and it's set in like this abandoned asylum it's so fun it's just such a fun vibe there's so many jump scares in this movie but if you can deal with some jump scares this movie's really 
really good and has some really cool haunting freaky moments in my opinion. The whole idea of this movie is that it's a camera crew of people that go around and they just do like a documentary about like different haunted spots in America but none of them actually believe that things are haunted they just make it up as they go like they just pretend like it's haunted but then they go to this abandoned hospital asylum and it actually is haunted and it's so funny. It's such a cool concept because you always go like why are people putting themselves in the situation but then this movie actually is properly explained because like they do this for their job like for money but they don't actually think it's going to be real but then it ends up being real. It's just a really well done like thought out movie in my opinion and it actually makes a lot of sense how people could get themselves into that situation. It's also really really scary this movie. Number eight is Hereditary. It came out in 2018 and was directed by Ari Aster. Ari Aster is another like up and coming horror director who is quite big and getting a lot of buzz making some really good movies. Midsummer, mm, okay maybe maybe not but Hereditary was really good in my opinion. It's a horror story but like at its core it's also a family drama. It's about family and how they deal with grief. It's so interesting man this movie. Like if you watch the trailer you think it's something but then you actually watch it and it's something completely different. This movie threw me through a loop. I expected one thing and then came out the other side with something completely different and I love movies that do that where it's just like you didn't expect anything that actually happened. Tony Collette as the mum in this movie is absolute genius. She is one of my favourite Australian actresses ever and she's just so good in this movie. She's so believable. It's just one of the best performances I've seen in my entire life in any movie ever, not just horror. She should have got an Oscar. Number seven is Parallel Activity 2, which came out in 2010 and was directed by Todd Williams. So I liked this movie the most of all the Parallel Activity movies. So if you do watch Parallel Activity 1, I would recommend watching number two. It's right in the sweet spot of having a few jump scares and being more scary like number three, but then also sort of like hiding some things and being more suspenseful like number one. So I feel like it's like right in that sweet spot of being really good in my opinion. I just liked the characters a bit more in this and it just seemed a bit more believable. There's also more of a family dynamic in this movie which I liked a lot and also I like how it ties back into number one in an interesting way. There's also a dog and the dog's my favorite. I love dogs. Number six is Get Out. This came out in 2017 and was directed by Jordan Peele once again. This is the other Jordan Peele movie that I really like that came out. This movie was a phenomenon when it hit. Like this movie changed the game with horror in my opinion. Jordan did something interesting with this movie. He brought an interesting story to horror which is the racial aspect of this movie because it is centered around a african-american man in current america dating a white woman and then he's being introduced to her family and it's about the experience of like being a black man being introduced to a primarily like completely white family but the other reason i really enjoyed this movie is like once again there's so much humor in this movie it's so funny it's well acted it's a little scary i wouldn't say this movie is like really scary. It's definitely a horror but not as scary as the other movies I'm mentioning on this list. I'm sure most people have already seen Get Out. It's very popular but if you haven't I would really recommend it. It's a good group watch once again. I'm just pointing out the really good group watches. <laughs> Number five is Aliens from 1986 directed by James Cameron. The only reason this one is higher than Alien, which I like both of them quite a bit, is because this one was the one I watched the most when I was little. I have a lot of nostalgia with Aliens. It's the follow-up to Aliens. Alien. And I'm sure if I watched Alien as much as I watched Aliens when I was little, Alien would be way higher, but it just so happens that top 10. So Aliens ends up being a bit higher, but yeah, I recommend it. I think it's a good follow-up to Alien, and I enjoyed it a lot as a kid. It was like the only horror film I really watched as a kid, so it's, it's just going to be up there on my list because I was too scared to watch any other horror. <laughs> Number four is Mother, which came out in 2017 and was directed by Darren Aronofsky. Darren Aronofsky is a very interesting director. He's made a lot of films over the years like Requiem for a Dream which that film made me feel physically sick when I watched that film but I was very happy that he made this film called Mother in 2017. It stars Jennifer Lawrence as the main character and she's absolutely brilliant. She's a very annoying character to watch, very frustrating to watch but if you truly understand what the film's trying to say it actually makes a lot of sense in my opinion and I think she plays the part very well. I remember I saw it in cinemas and it absolutely blew my 
my mind. I was like leaning forward in my seat physically, just like this film is so good towards the end. It was just perfect. It's very my style of film, which is like intense, very deep, psychological, a lot of metaphors, makes you think a lot, and it makes you feel quite a lot <laughs> all at once. So if you want a film that's very serious, very intense, very deep, and will have you diving into Reddit afterwards to understand the film, then I definitely recommend Mother. It's so good. It's so well acted. It's so well shot. The story all takes place in the one house, which I really like again. And yeah, I could do like a whole deep dive into Mother and why I think it's one of the best films to ever exist. It's not just horror, but in general, it's one of my favorite films. I love Mother so much. A lot of people find Mother boring because it's so slow at the beginning, but you just need to wait it out. You just need to wait it out, okay? Just be patient. Number three is the best found footage horror film ever. It's The Blair Witch Project. It came out in 1999 and was directed by Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez. I love The Blair Witch Project because similar reason to why I love Paranormal Activity because it did so much for the fan footage horror genre. It was not the first fan footage horror film to ever come out but it was definitely one of the pioneers and really propelled the fan footage horror genre forward for years and decades to come. People thought that this film was real. Man, that's how good this film is. Film's like a documentary and it's obviously fake <laughs> but yeah people thought that it was like a real documentary because people didn't understand what fan footage movies were at that point like it wasn't a huge thing yet and the film was marketed like missing persons and stuff like that apart from that the actual film itself is really good and I think it still holds up quite a bit it's very slow and very suspenseful but I think it's paced actually extremely well it's not too long like Mother's a lot longer while Mother is 121 minutes Blair Witch Project is only 81 minutes it's paced extremely well even though it's just full of suspense and full of tension and anticipation for the end. It's a movie that I think a lot of people would enjoy if they appreciate the suspense aspect of a horror, then like this is one of the best suspense films I've ever seen in my opinion. Number two is Saw from 2004, directed by James Wan. James Wan is absolutely phenomenal. Like, it's, this movie is so good, man. I love him. Oh my god. So, Saw is not a gore film. Saw is a psychological thriller slash horror. It's a mystery film, guys. That's what this film is. It's literally a mystery. It's not even that gorish, like, at all. So please don't not watch Saw just because you're scared of gore. Sorry to spoil, but it's not very gory at all. It's all just suspense and mystery and thriller and psychological thriller aspects, and it's so good. There's so many twists and turns. Everything I have to say for Saw number two can be repeated again for Saw number one, except that Saw number one is better. It's the best one. There was no franchise yet. He was just making this film as a standalone at that point. You can tell that James Wan just, he has a respect for the horror genre. He's an amazing filmmaker. Like what he was able to make with this film of such a low budget is amazing. I am someone that loves like puzzles and like trying to figure things out and like that little treasure hunt sort of vibe to this film. So that's also really fun. And yeah, if you love twists and turns check out Saw. And number one, my favorite horror movie of all time is The Shining. Came out in 1980 and is directed by our friend Stanley Kubrick, one of the best directors of all time. The Shining, oh god man. Yeah, I love horrors that have that drama aspect. They have that broken family, psychological craziness of individuals aspect to it. Essentially like a character study first and foremost and then a horror. I love horror movies like that. And Jack Nicholson in this film is just so good. It's one of my favorite performances ever that I've seen on screen like his performance and this is probably my top three performances of all time in any movie and this movie will always have like such a special place in my heart the soundtrack is amazing I would love to own the soundtrack on record one day that would be like my favorite thing ever if I could get that on record Sally Kubrick obviously is amazing amazing cinematography script writing great set design absolutely off the charts the whole film is essentially set in a huge hotel in the middle of winter and it's just it's got the vibes man it's just so good the little boy called Danny Lloyd he's really good as well like such a phenomenal child actor in this film even Shelley Duvall really good in my opinion I don't know like some people don't like her but I think she's really good as well I, everybody in this film is just amazing I just love this film to death it's probably in my top five films of all time in general or my top three maybe and everyone should go watch this film there's just so many iconic moments in this film like the blood coming out the elevator the two twins in the hallway Danny on his bike like just 
so many amazing moments. Even if you don't love horror, you should watch The Shining because it's like the best of the best when it comes to this genre. That's my top 20 horror films of all time. I hope you got a recommendation for this Halloween and you all enjoy it. This is as in the spirit of Halloween that I'll get here in Australia because we don't really celebrate, but I hope it's sort of spooky over in America or Canada or wherever my audience is. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, and comment, and tell me what your favorite horror movie is of all time. I know I didn't include the classics like Halloween and Scream and stuff, but they're just not my personal favorites. These are my personal favorites. It's a subjective list. I'm off now. Bye-bye.